What's up everybody? This is Rob Shack. So today we're gonna be doing the next video in my Grand Turismo 3 Rivals series. We're gonna be using two very interesting cars. I figured this will be interesting. We'll do the Nismo GTR LM Road Going version, and I just should not have left that little thing. And the Tom's X540 Chaser. These are two really weird cars that I feel like kind of stand out. They're kind of out of like they're just really weird, and you'll see why. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Help me get to a thousand subs. Hoping to get there by the end of the year. Um, I picked these two cars. If you're new to the channel, what I'm doing in this series is I basically pick two cars that, or maybe three. It's usually two, but sometimes there's three that are basically rivals in the game. Since in this game, Polyphony didn't really have a lot of time to make a lot of cars because they were focused on quality over quantity, which I still think was the right call. But in order to compensate for that, they basically were like, let's just basically get cars that are similar in stats or similar in, you know, mechanics and then put them in the same races together so that we can basically have a lot of fun and replayability in the game by having a lot of good cars in the game all racing together in a series where they are very similar in stats. So, as you can see, I've been doing that for a while with a bunch of different cars and it's very fun, very good times to do that. Um, I basically talk about everybody's uh, stats, ways that they're similar to the car that I'm comparing them to, and talk about which one I think is generally the better one, or which one is the easier one to use. I just give all the information that I can. And then I'll do an AI fa uh, AI battle, if, it's, if they're terrible cars, an AI fail battle series, but, um, and then I'll do a max speed test at the end of the video. Timestamps will be below. So I picked these two cars for something that was interesting that I noticed in my last Rival Series video. Uh, these two cars are both in the race where it's the endurance race on Super Speedway. Um, the Nismo GTR LM Road Going version is a very iconic car in the Gran Turismo series. It's been in every game, every main game. Uh, I don't think it's been in sport, but sport's like kind of a main game. It's kind of confusing. So, But every numbered game has had the Nismo GTR LM Road Going version. Um, I think it was in the intro video in Gran Turismo 1, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it is. It's a great car, great looking car. It's uh, the road going, road homog, what's that word? Homog, that road, it's the road version of that race car that's the 95 uh, Nismo GTR LM edition that was in GT1 and 2. And they, for some reason, got rid of those cars, but they kept the road going version in the game, which that's cool. They both, they looked great. Um, I kind of wish the, race car had been in the game still because that would have been a very interesting car to see in all these games but it's okay so uh i picked this car and the tom's x540 chaser because they both kind of are in this similar block of cars with lots of turbo lag terrible tire wear heavy high engine power cars basically like mercedes that are not mercedes you know how like mercedes have a lot of power but they're also really heavy these two cars are both really heavy have really rapid tire wear and are both kind of like in this weird like heavy turbo lag, have a lot of power, don't really have that great of a top speed, but like have a decent one if you can get in a draft of a car, you know, stuff like that. They're just really interesting cars. They both sound really great. Um, and so I noticed that in that uh, Super Speedway Endurance Race, these cars were very, very similar and I kind of hadn't noticed that before. So I was like, well, let's do a rival series on these two. I have a lot of other ideas, but if y'all also have ideas for rival cars, I will uh, look into them and take them seriously and probably do them. Because I like when, I feel like people kind of notice that about this game. There are a lot of ser like cars that are very similar in stats and they just throw them all in, you know, races in this game, which allows for this game to have such a replayable status. Which is why I like this game a lot. I think this game, for it doesn't really have the quantity of cars, but the cars they do have are very quality. And it was one of the few games that didn't have just like a million of every car. They still had duplicates in this game of cars, but it wasn't that many. Like they really didn't have a lot of duplicate cars in this game. Like I'm pretty sure the only duplicates are like the MX-5 Miata. There's a few of those. There's a few NSXs. But like there's not that many. Like there's like only two Skyline R34s in this game. It's only one R33 and one R32. Um... Well, there's like the Nismos, so there's those, but like, it's just, there's, those are all such different cars that I don't really think about them being the same. I'm talking more about cars that have the exact same power. There's a lot of cars in these old games, 
that just are exactly the same and it's just like okay yeah technically you have a thousand cards but like about 200 of them are duplicates in this game it's like four there's like only like a few rx7s it's a few nsx's it's nice <laughs> it's refreshing to not see so many cars that are very 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 similar but um yeah, so the Nismo GTR LM road going version is a car that has a pretty interesting handling. It's not great. It slides a lot. It's kind of predictable though. Some cars, when they slide a lot, it's like really out of control. This car generally is very clear when it's starting to lose its stability, as opposed to some of the other cars I reviewed in this review, revival series that just totally fall apart and you just can't even keep them in control at all. Um, this one seems to do a pretty good job of staying under control has really bad turbo lag. You can see how fast it is going at its low gears, and then when it gets high, it does start to slow down a lot. It's very noticeable when you get into the later gears where it's not accelerating nearly as fast. You can really see it drop off, like like right now. Look at how slow it's going. Then we switch down to the sixth gear, and then it actually starts to accelerate faster. This car does kind of have an inefficient use of its power anyway, so it wasn't that shocking. Some cars, it's really shocking, but this car just kind of has a very strange distribution of its power, which the Tom's X540 Chaser also has. Um, I think this car does have better handling, just that all-wheel drive is gonna keep it going a little bit more, keep it a little bit more rooted on the track, and it also is weaker. That's the thing I've noticed with these games. Certain cars are more powerful in these little rival series, and certain cars are a little bit weaker, but they have better handling. So now we'll switch over to the Chaser. All right, now we are moving on to the Tom's X540 Chaser. Uh, this is a very interesting car. Some sort of Chaser has been in, I think, every single Gran Turismo game, except for maybe the Sport. There's probably not one in Sport. I would be surprised if there was one in Sport. But um, the Tom's X540 Chaser kind of replaced... In, in the old games, there was, like, I think, two different... There was a few different Chasers, honestly. And there was also a tuned, I don't think it was the Tom's X540, I think there was like a TRD chaser maybe. So they've kind of always had a chaser in the games. Just interesting because a chaser has never been in America, yet it's like a dominant, there's always a chaser in every Gran Turismo game. And I'm like, I feel like people don't even know, I didn't know what a chaser was. So... But yeah, so this is an interesting car. It looks cool. I don't think they make it anymore, though. I don't know if they even replaced it with anything. But um, <clears throat> this car is extremely crazy with handling. It's got a lot more power, obviously. Still has a lot of turbo lag and will have very bad tire wear when we get to it. But the handling on this car is absolutely terrible. It's hilarious. And again, this is why I wanted to compare the... the Nismo GTR LM Road Going version also has really bad handling, but it is manageable. But this car has way more power and has just terrible handling. It's hysterical to watch this thing slide all over the course. Even with, like, no, it doesn't, I'm, I have on the little assist and this thing is sliding like crazy. It's shocking. Its brakes are really good, though. Kind of didn't realize that. I didn't expect that. The GTR LM Road Going version doesn't have the best brakes. But this car has the brakes and the power and absolutely no handling um, and has really bad turbo lag as well. Both cars do. Again, this car has more horsepower, so it's probably going to not look as bad. But um, this car seems really, really inefficient with its power, even less so than the GTR LM Road Game version because the tires are just sliding all the time. Like, I feel like this car would be better if I wasn't even fully revving it. Like, if I was literally pushing the pedal like three quarters of the way the whole time until like I get to late gears, then it would be better to do that. But yeah, this car is out of control with horsepower or uh, with handling. You have to be super careful and it also doesn't turn very well. So you like, if you start to turn not well, you're just gonna go into the gravel like I just did back there. You just have to deal with it because if you try to turn fast, the car will just start freaking out and sliding. I don't know how the AI even holds this car on the road. Like when I watched them drive this car in their, um, in that AI battle, which we'll get to after this, it's shocking how it's able to even sort of keep this car on the track. It's it's really shocking, honestly. And both the GTR LM Road Going version and the Chaser both have really, really bad tire wear. 
I mean, you can see like this car is sliding all over the place and its tires are revving. It's spinning its tires like crazy. Even the AI have problems with that, which is like really saying something. So obviously this car is like, I mean, I'm literally drifting this thing right now, like with like aim ass or a steering assist on and traction control. It's, I mean, how out of, this car would just be spinning like crazy, even with green tires without the assistance on like this car would be completely nuts so i don't know how the ai holds this thing on the road but they can again like i am just drifting this thing and i i can't even i mean i'll try to put it in the main mode for just a second just so y'all can see me trying to keep this thing on the road but it is like i mean i am able to slide this thing without even without i mean the under is this understeer i think this is understeer the steering of this car is so insane and it goes flying off the road into the grass a lot. I mean, this car would be impossible in sport. Like the right, the driving mechanics in sport are so polished. This car would be like a death sentence. Like who would want to drive this thing at all? But it's again, it's, it's powerful. So like if you were on like maybe a special stage route X, this car would be fun to use. But like, like I am having to brake constantly and take each corner super slow. I think I'll still end up getting a better lap time than the GTR LM Road Going Edition because that thing is so much slower. But it's going to be close because of the steering of this car. Like, I mean, this car want like is begging to spin out and it has such a bad steering problem. It's insane. And again, there the Road Going version is a newer is an older car. This car is dated as a 2000, but I mean, it's based on a Chaser from the 90s as well, so maybe it's just But I mean, trying to keep you can't rev this you can't accelerate this car through a corner like to save its life it won't let you do that you have to basically keep letting off the gas every two seconds just to keep the car from staying remotely stable i mean it's it's a it's a doozy so again i would if you if you want the challenge of the chaser go for it but like i think as i've noticed with these things there's always the car that's slower with better handling which is the gtr lm going edition and then the crazy car with power which is the Tom's X540 Chaser. I expect the Chaser to have a higher top speed at the end too, and I expect this car to go faster. But again, it's going to pit every two seconds on the AI race we do, and it'll be fun to it'll be fun to see it. It does have good brakes, I'll give it that, and it does have a high power. But yeah, this thing like trying to take this car on the corners is like it just wants to spin out. You basically it's like you're drift like driving on a rally track, but on a tarmac. So that. I can't even imagine this car on a rally circuit. It would probably just spin out every two seconds. So yeah, crazy stuff. Great car. Great challenge. Probably exactly how it drives in real life. Thank y'all for watching and we'll move down to the AI fail part. All right, so here we go. We have a, an AI battle here with the Tom's X540 Chaser and the Nismo GTR LM Road Going Edition or road going version or whatever they call it. It's always got a different name, but it's the same car. Chaser and the Nismo are great. Uh, terrible tire wear from both of them. You'll see that they both pit a lot. Do about seven, 16 laps on this one. So I wanted the uh, Nismo and the Chaser to battle it out. So I destroyed the RGT there and just knock them way out of the way so that for a brief and shining moment, the two cars with terrible tire wear are in the lead. It's awesome to see for the brief second that it is there. And I also decided to try to give the chaser a little bit of a boost because he kind of saw everyone flying all over the place. They're both equally decently fast. I think the Tom's is a little bit faster, but then look at this terrible handling. You see this, he's going way out wide, immediately gets passed by everybody. And then now is in fifth. So that was fun while it lasted. Terrible handling is putting it lightly. Good speed though, obviously, can get really, really fast by the end of the straightaway, which is awesome. But then, yeah, obviously that handling just really inhibits his ability to go anywhere. The GTR LM Road Car has uh, also very bad tire wear and still is holding the lead. Actually does a surprisingly good job of staying with the RGT and the Motorsport Elise, who are clearly the two better cars in this race. Um, they both are taking turns very wide and stuff like that. So it actually takes them a while to get past Tom's X540 Chaser already is starting to get red tires, which is just sad. Honestly, it just is. So, um, 
but is you know able to do a good job of staying ahead of the mines, I guess. But the mines has like the worst top speed ever, even though his handling is amazing. So uh, RGT doesn't have quite the speed. Uh, well, it does have the speed, but doesn't have the handling of the motorsport at least, which is how they are able to stay close. But the speed of the RGT is great. All that happens to him is that he's never able to pass that uh, Nismo or the Motorsport Elise for a while. Motorsport Elise has this weird thing where he drifts inward and then slides in, goes well into the grass, and then kind of recovers it from there. Everyone else doesn't really do that. I don't really know what that is. It's kind of weird. But again, this is where the handling of the road-going version of the Nismo is pretty decent. Um, <laughs> Chaser is stuck behind the... Uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, mines, but then he just gets launched away. Automatically goes right into the pit, only four, not even four laps in, already needing to pit. Oh, well, four laps in, not even on the fifth, and then pits. The GTR LM road car is now slowly starting to fight away from them as his uh, tire wear starts to show. Roof RGT and the Motorsport Elise are dueling for second, and then the mines is just sitting there with needing, about to hit his top speed everywhere. Hits his top speed a lot on many corners. It's kind of a sad situation to be hitting your top speed on places where you shouldn't be. Uh, Chaser is now in being lapped by everybody because the pit, the pit is so long on this course. It's hilarious. And now we're at the point where, I mean, again, the GTR LM road car is still decently holding his speed. But yeah, he's about to go into the pit and then he'll be back there in fifth or in last with the Chaser. He'll probably stay in fifth as the chaser will be for sure in last. But the roof and the motorsport stay together for a while. And then eventually the roof ends up passing. But he does pit earlier, so it's kind of weird. This I like this course because it put the element of pitting in as a little interesting little dynamic there. Thought that was always kind of a cool thing about this course. Um, again, I loved this. I thought it was super interesting. Um, I'll end up, it's kind of turning into a battle between other cars, but I wanted to just show these two cars because I thought that they were both interesting and that they both had terrible tire wear, very bad tire wear, and both get passed by cars significantly slower than them, and it impacts their race kind of a lot, actually. So the Chaser is still uh, very far behind the GTR LM car, but he'll eventually slowly get close to him as the chase as the GTR is only going 50 miles an hour and the chaser is actually on the course right now. But again, you can literally watch him and watch his tire wear happen in real time. That's how bad the tire wear is of the chaser. And then the GTR LM Road Going Edition is not much better, honestly. So it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny to see the shocking difference between these tire wears and the I don't know how the motorsport at least is able to do this weird, crazy drift thing and then not just automatically have terrible tires. Like, I have no idea how he's able to do that, but he is. So now the Chaser and the GTR are on the same straightaway. Doesn't really last. It's going to be funny. So thank you all again for watching. Next up, we'll do the... Um, the next up thing we'll do is the... What are we going to do? The max speed test. So I hope you all enjoyed the rest of the video. Thank you all for watching. Um, again... Both cars have terrible handling. Chaser has less, has more power. Both have terrible tire wear. Hilarious cars that I would probably not recommend. If you, if these two cars were in a race, I recommend driving a different car. <laughs> recommend driving a different car in the game. But that's what makes this fun is you get to see crazy cars doing funny things. So again, thank you all for watching. Hope you all have enjoyed. Peace.